People, today I have 10 DIY hacks for you and they're viewer favorites. These were suggestions from you guys on some of your favorite hacks. Some of these are completely new to me and I'll be trying them for the first time. And others I'm gonna be revisiting I have tried before and just may not have went so well. Kind of like the one where you guys told me in the comments over and over and over again that I forgot the parchment paper. And luckily for me in today's video, I'm not gonna forget the parchment paper. People, so many of you had so many different comments, tips, and things that you have tried with this hack. I'm like, I gotta give it another go. So I got two pieces of wood from Walmart, a napkin, and a piece of fabric. I'm going to do the napkin here, rip off that sneaky layer. We're gonna just get it down to the decorative layer. We're gonna take a piece of our cling wrap. We're gonna make sure it's nice and flat on our piece of wood. And then we're gonna take that decorative layer of napkin and lay it right on top of that piece of cling wrap on the wood. There's no Mod Podge included. Next, we're gonna bring in our parchment paper. That's right, that's right. Look at it making its entrance, its debut. Okay, its debut into the video. That's right, and I'm even opening the packaging right here for y'all, look at that. Look at that freshness of the parchment paper. I even splurged for the name brands. I cut myself down a little sliver to fit over our piece to make sure that we didn't have any of the cling wrap sticking to our iron. And we're just gonna press this sucker down and go ham on it for about 10 minutes. Then I put this off to the side and let this dry and brought out the fabric one. Truth be told, I had to weed through what I thought was going to bring added value to this hack this go around. And even after all that, look at me, I still started ironing without that parchment paper. I was like, oh, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get it again. If you did not see the original video, I'll link it down in the description box for you. But we had to revisit this hack because many people had many opinions about the fabric aspect of it. Now, even with the parchment paper, it was still not getting hot enough for me. So I'm here ironing it without the parchment paper and it's still, <laughs> it's still not working for me. The comment I've seen the most said that they take more cling wrap and put it over top the fabric and then iron it down. So I did just that. This was pretty cool. It really does kind of sandwich it in there. Now I iron this for about 10 minutes. Okay. It took me a good 30 minutes just on that fabric. All right. Just on the fabric. I decided, Hey, why not? <laughs> Let's do it to the napkin as well. This also was pretty cool. I gotta admit, I thought this was a really cool thing. Now sanding the napkin completely fine. You know what I mean? The fabric, which one of you lied to me and told me to just sand the fabric off? Cause this, this takes elbow grease, okay? 20 minutes later on the patio and the fabric's still coming off. What kind of games are you guys playing with me? Okay, <laughs> what is going on? The napkin, however, well, it's absolutely fabulous and I highly recommend it. I enjoyed the outcome of this. The fabric, however, I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong here. I did the first layer of cling wrap, second layer of cling wrap, and I definitely ironed for well over 20 minutes between both layers, way longer than you would ever have to do using Mod Podge with the iron on method with fabric. I just don't see me revisiting this hack anytime soon. I do love the napkin result. Using a nail file for sandpaper has been one of the most suggested things in my comments, I think, since I started the DIY channel. So when I've seen this as a suggestion again, I'm like, we're gonna give this a go. And we're gonna do that using this little birdhouse wind chime that I'm currently making for a spring DIY video. And you'll just have to stay tuned for that, but the video is coming out. I decoupaged the top of this little birdhouse with the napkin and I left overhang, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, we're gonna open this little nail file on camera. We're gonna just pick us some out and we're going to take the nail file and we're gonna just trim around the top of this birdhouse and get this napkin off. Obviously, I had to try this hack on a napkin, right? And I gotta say, people, I'm mighty impressed. I really am. This was super easy to use. It didn't really take any elbow grease to apply any pressure with this nail file to get this napkin off here. And I'm sure depending on what we're sanding, we're gonna have different results with that. You know what I'm saying? How many of you all use little nail files to have around your craft table to sand down your projects? 
I have done this hack before and I use this hack. So when I seen this as one of the favorites and one of the recommendations, I'm like, oh yeah, let's do it. And we're going to keep it super simple using some Dollar Tree supplies as of the stencil and the little circular wood piece so you can recreate this at home. Your medium choice is completely up to you. I'm going to use the decoupage medium by deco art and you want to make sure that whenever you're doing this you tape down the stencil on top of whatever your stencil this is going to ensure that with the smushing of the wet mob hodge underneath your stencil it's going to seal around all the little cracks that it has let it completely dry and then you're going to come in with your paint color so in the event you're wondering how that works exactly that's what it does the Mod Podge basically seals all around the edges where there's separation. So once it's dry and you come in with your paint colors, it's just going over top the Mod Podge and it won't be able to seep through where the seal is not because you've already put that Mod Podge on there and it's made sure that there are no gaps decided to get a little artsy fartsy here for y'all and really get creative blending different colors so you can see just how amazing this hack is and it really really does stop bleed through people this works so good on wood but it would also work if you wanted to paint this a color just make sure you take the same color and go over the stencil it's going to give you the same effect that the mod podge does and if you want to use mod podge over the paint you can do that as well I love this little craft hack. So when I seen it, I was like, absolutely, let's revisit it. And I've had another person in the comments at some point say that they use this to make stamps. So I was like, we're gonna test that out too. The sad thing was I didn't realize I was low on hot glue. So I only used one stamp, okay? Because I was also filming another video and I was like, this has gotta last me until I get to the store. People, y'all know I gotta be real with y'all. I'm just letting you know. That's why we got one, okay? I had enough hot glue to spare just for one. I decided to take this little toothpicky type thing and smoosh it on in here to make sure that that hot glue is really pressed down on the imprint. And then the fun begins. You have to wait quite a while, actually quite a while and let this dry. Now I would not recommend putting any of these on furniture pieces or pieces you're going to hang in the window. They will melt. If you're using it as a stamp though, now mind you, this was minimal. It, it didn't come out as dark as I would have liked to but the idea is there and it definitely works and I will absolutely be using this in the future because I have a couple molds I would love to stamp on things. The other option is to just use this as an embellishment and I recommend using Gorilla Glue Gel or E6000 instead of more hot glue to attach it to something just for a better bond. You can paint the pieces on up and add a little bit of embellishments in there. They usually turn out really well. This one's a little on the half but the hack works. I gotta be honest, out of all the hacks, this one had me the most skeptic. I just grabbed some ice, you know, out the freezer and an old shirt that I use to paint in. It's just a gray joint that I have laying around in my work clothes and some mustard. I pushed out the tiniest little dribble onto the shirt and then I just wiped it off. The hack said to immediately remove the stains. I did. I wiped that sucker right on off there and then grabbed the ice and just start. And that's what I did. I just quickly grabbed it and I just started, you know, applying that ice just like this. So after a couple minutes of rubbing the ice, the shirt got nice and damp and I decided to take my heat gun and just kind of dry off the area where I squeezed the little smoosh monster with the shirt. To my surprise, it was almost completely gone. There was just the tiniest hint of yellow on the shirt. We have used alcohol. We have used hand sanitizer. And now we are about to use nail polish remover to get the paint out of our crusty bit paintbrushes. And this nail polish remover does have acetone in it. Now it's time to bring in the crusty bit paintbrushes. Here are the three that we're going to be using today. And I wanted to use three different ones because they all have different gunk inside of them. This one is just straight paint. You know what I mean? This one's Mod Podge with a little bit of paint and even some like antique Waverly wax. This is just Mod Podge. I wanted to really give this a go. This is one of the best that people say 
works. So I was like, we're trying it all, people. We ain't just trying the paint. Now, I've had people say that this stuff works within minutes. So I figured we're going to go in with paintbrush first and just let it sit there. And damn if it didn't start <laughs> within about five minutes. I could bend the bristles on this brush. I was completely shocked. Next up is the brush with our mix in it. And yep, with this one as well. Within a couple minutes, it actually started bending. It wasn't as easy to bend as it was the one with the paint, but it started to bend. Now the Mod Podge did take a little bit longer. I let these sit for 30 minutes. Took them to the sink for a good wash with some seventh generation dishwashing liquid and hot water. Here's the brush with our paint. And as you can see, it could use another scrub, but it's pretty great. The other two brushes, however, I would have left sit in the nail polish probably another 30 minutes and give them a good wash. They're pretty flexible. The material in them is really broken down. There's no crusty bits left in here. So at the end of the day, all of you who have been suggesting this to me for such a long time when you see my crusty bit paintbrushes, I gotta say, this is the best hack I've seen so far to get the paint out brushes. I don't remember who and I don't remember when, but at some point I had someone mention in the comments to use a brown paper bag as sandpaper on your projects. So I grabbed some brown paper bags from Target. These were cheap, $1.99. I had this little piece of scrap wood laying around in my patio. I'm going to be painting it soon. So I'm like, let's give it a little pre-sand. It's got some rough edges. It is not entirely rough. There are some smooth spots, but there's definitely rough edges on this and I'm like I think I'll be able to tell whether or not this is going to work or not just by using this. I had no blueprint to follow people okay so I literally just grabbed two bags and I started ripping them up. I ripped them into three different pieces and then I started balling them up and just prayed at this point. I was like I'm making a fool of myself on YouTube and then I was like wait a minute it's just another Friday on the channel. So I started balling the suckers up and I was like, what do we have to lose at this point? Somebody might be sanding their projects with bags going forward. What's the worst that can happen? We scrape our piece of wood up. Now I will tell you, this took a little bit of hand strength. I didn't have this wad very tightly wound together, but this is what we're working with. I propped the board up and right here on the edge, there was some raised bits and I just started going ham. And sure enough... <laughs> to my amazement and still this works it actually <laughs> sanded this wood no lie y'all have to try this <laughs> I mean I definitely think there were a little bit of scratch marks on the wood but it was smooth y'all <laughs> it was smooth Never had I ever imagined in my wildest dreams being a DIY channel that makes things did I think I would be scrubbing my shower filming myself on camera for all of you? But this hack did. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you for all of that. I wanted to show you guys her actual comment because this hack is unbelievable. And I wanted you guys to actually see it up close in case you wanted to try this at home. Now, I want to prepare you guys. I didn't clean my shower for a little bit trying to prepare for this okay so there was some soap scum build up again just being real with y'all just putting it all out there okay all out there so first thing I did was take a little bit I didn't again have a blueprint I just kind of squirt what it felt like was necessary and some extra dawn because I needed more and a dab of distilled vinegar now I clean naturally on a normal so I use vinegar and baking soda very often just be mindful because See how it bubbles? This is the interaction you get when you add vinegar to baking soda, in case you didn't know. So just a tiny bit goes a long way. She said to make a paste out of it, so I made it toothpastey. <laughs> I was happy with this consistency. I did notice, though, that as I was spreading it in the shower, it got harder as I went along. So maybe I could have added a little bit more Dawn. I, like I said, clean on a normal. A lot of times what I do is I will sprinkle baking soda everywhere and then I will add the distilled vinegar in a spray bottle and spray it and clean and 
all the things okay all the things <laughs> now i had such a good experience with this i actually decided to film me doing this live after it dried for a couple minutes all right people moment of truth i scrubbed this for about five minutes just to get the paste everywhere really well and then i let it set for about five minutes and she said to just take some hot water and rinse it on off so let's see how this works lucky for me i did have a handheld shower head if you don't have one i wouldn't recommend doing this hack because that paste is thick and it takes some rinsing to get this off of there it's hard to tell but the shower is still dripping wet. the best way for me to show you like that it's still wet is to kind of give you the little chrome sorry about the rag being in the way <laughs> but i want it to just wipe it off this is how you can really tell in my opinion, when something does a good job, just kind of letting it set and then cleaning it off. You guys might not know this about me, but my aunt owns a cleaning company. And one of my first jobs ever, when I was like 14, I went and worked with her and was cleaning houses. So to get your faucets and stuff to really shine after you're clean, after you've cleaned them, you can take a buff, you know, microfiber cloth works better obviously but look how shiny that is minimal scrubbing on this this is unbelievable <laughs> that stuff worked pretty good thank you very much for the hack i actually really like this and it was minimal scrubbing this was way easier on me i mean seriously sorry i know you guys thought i was moving on to the next hack look at the shine i'm i'm just i'm honestly impressed with how well this works. I, I really am. Just letting that sit. I just, all I did was scrub it on, all I did was scrub it on here. It took me a couple minutes and then let it sit in minimal, minimal. I'm There are too many of you watching right now that are ecstatic <laughs> to see that I'm finally given the burn method a true go. Well, I have tried this before. If you haven't seen that video, I will link it down in the description box. It did not go as planned. I just kind of impromptu popped it in a video. I was like, I'm going to give it a try. I have so many people. I do a lot of decoupage. People talk about it. Brandy, do the burn method. It's amazing. I have been skeptical about it. I have my ways. You know, I am older and I'm set in them. Okay. Okay. I'm just kidding. I'll try anything once. Honestly, that's why we're here. Obviously, I was told that one of the things I did wrong by a couple people was to leave the Mod Podge wet. So that's what we're doing here. I just am applying some Mod Podge and I am quickly against my will slapping this napkin down on the palette it was real hard for me and i gotta tell you even just this step alone to make sure the mod podge is wet and i gotta hurry up and put this one here like i don't feel fuzzy inside of that at all so that makes me want to skip the whole project but i didn't instead we brought in the lighter <laughs> and you know i had to use a long one because the short one i'd probably you know burn myself or something so now here's me showing you that the mod podge is still wet so i just kind of picked the side and i let it rip immediately the end caught on and kept going around the one side it kind of died down around the other side and it didn't go in between the palette at all. I was thinking about trying to light in between the palette and I'm like, hold on a minute, this guy's got a mind of its own and it's kind of just going around the palette. So I was like, we're just gonna let this run out and see where it goes. Now, one of the things that's supposed to make this so great is because it goes in between the cracks and around things real quickly and all the things I've seen videos. I've had people recommend me videos. As you can see, whether I'm doing it in the middle or the end, it's not catching very well. However, Ever, when I held the flame too long in one spot whoosh, and it started to light I immediately started to pat the end I was like uh-uh <laughs> no more burn method I'm good people I'll use the sander no more tips necessary on this one thanks so much for hanging out with me today people I hope you enjoyed these DIY viewer favorite hacks and I hope you're a little bit happier with the cling wrap deck <laughs> <laughs> now that we added the parchment paper as always i appreciate all of you so much thank you for stopping by and until next time